Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the OKD Working Group. Uh, we're going to just get started here. Um, if you haven't yet, please add your name into the Working Group meeting notes. The link is in the chat, and um, we'll get rocking and rolling here. Today we have um, a couple of things. Um, thank you all for um, participating in Red Hat Summit last week. The summit content is online um, at the at the registration page. I'll throw that in chat too. Um, Christian and Vadim did an awesome State of OKD4 talk. Uh, we had a little bit of traffic in the OKD chat room. Um, wasn't as, as wonderful as I thought, but I think they tried to reproduce the, the booth experience and have one chat room pretty much for every single booth. Um, so uh, it was not as um, effective as I think in person. But it was still a, a very interesting uh, learning curve for everybody else. I don't know, Vadim, I, I saw you in the chat room a few times. Neil was in the chat room at one point. Um, but any you know, other people have thoughts about how the Red Hat Summit went? It was pretty good, actually. I, I was pleasantly surprised at how well that worked out, Diane. I, I, I thought it was pretty amazing from an OpenShift Commons perspective. At one point, we had... 3,600 and something folks logged into one of the uh, thing, one of the presentations that we did in the morning. Uh, I haven't got all the details on the, the total counts of everything, but it was pretty amazing to get that many eyeballs on um, some of the stuff that's going on here. So um, I heard there was I heard there was 81,000 total uh, attendees for yeah. the Red Hat Virtual Summit, which was just mind-bogglingly huge. Yeah, it, w it was. I think um, the first day there were 8,000 people logged in for um, Monday, which was day zero, for, and which is when we host the OpenShift Commons. Um, of those, I, you know, I think a lot of them were people just looking to see and make sure they were set up for the following days. But then on the next day, it was insane. Um, you know, I think at one point I saw 70,000. It may have gotten up to 80,000 people registered. So it was pretty crazy. I'm, just, um, I still think, for me, what you know, the content was amazing, um, and getting to see all the talks that I don't normally get to see was pretty great. But um, I wasn't so thrilled with with the chat experience, the interactivity, um, mostly because it was just hard to find people. So, um, looking for any feedback on that. Oh, wow. the chat was that was my low point as well. Like it was difficult to. Get in touch with people. Be reminded that people were notify, uh, trying to talk to me. Things like that. It yeah. that one was the low point. But like other than that, I was impressed at how well this this went. Yeah, well, I, I was too. I mean, it, there was a lot of upfront work on getting stuff there, but I, I overall I was pretty impressed. Um, well, remains to be seen. I've got two more Commons gatherings coming up that are going to be virtual standalones. So um, using the same platform. So any feedback people have, um, love to hear that. Um, I'm still getting access to the dashboard behind the scenes to see what actually happened. So I'll keep you all posted when that happens. So today, um, I know Vadim and um, Christian are both here. If you guys could give us a quick update on OKD and where we're at right now. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so hi, everybody. Um, so I think we're getting really close to to merging the MCO uh, branches. Uh, 4.6 development will open next Monday, and I'll, by then I'll have all the PRs needed um, lined up, and they'll be hopefully um, they'll get reviewed quickly and merge very soon after the opening of the branch of the master, the unfreezing of the master branch next week um it's quite a um there, there's the dual support um pr i'm working on right now for spec 2 and spec 3 dual support in mco and that's quite large so it may take a few days to get that reviewed but um yeah eventually it'll it'll be merged into mco and then we can sort of rid us uh, rid ourselves of the fcos branch fork in mco for the installer, we may need to carry the uh, the fork a little bit longer, but we've sort of come to the conclusion that we can actually release OKDGA 
with the installer still being forked um, because it's yeah it, it's easier to just maintain one fork instead of two and yeah there shouldn't be too many large breaking changes in in the installer in that time frame anyway uh, so that's good um, it's still you know so, um, so we're go ahead Neil so does that so that means that everything is going to get merged in all the fcos branches will get merged in except for the installer is that what you're saying yeah so we only have two fcos branches it's only mco and installer um sort of forked for fcos and um the mco will will be able to support both operating systems from the master branch and the installer eventually will be merged as well but um because OCP is still defaulting to spec two. Um, that's actually not quite clear when that will switch over will happen. So until then, we may have to um, sort of carry the installer fork. But uh, we may even get it merged um, sooner and sort of have dual support of the installer in one in one master branch and introduce a build flag or something. So we have to two different build, you know, binary builds um, for, for the installer. But um, yeah, for, in, for now, um, OCP still defaults to spec two, uh, even though we will have dual support in the MCO already. So I, I think I also heard um, that even, I didn't hear him actually, I saw it in a chat, we have a beta five coming out shortly. Is that out the door or? I think Vadim can can answer that. I think it's in the works. Yes, Vadim. Yeah, sure. Um, I tagged the latest nightly as beta five. Um, and it's running upgrade tests now. Uh, the issue is that two we have failed. I'm looking into the details of that, and if it passes, it would officially become the beta 5. Um, if the upgrade fails, we will scrap it and uh, promote a nightly with a fix. So it's almost ready, but not officially yet ready. Awesome. Um, another, awesome. another fun thing we're working on is uh, the ability to install a single node cluster. Unlike CRC, it would be a proper Full blow no kitty cluster the operator is enabled. Uh, but and it would use a bootstrap node, of course, but you would be able to fit all the pods into one single machine. Uh, of course, you won't be able to upgrade it, but other than that, it's um, it's a, as good as many other no kitty cluster. That pull request is not yet merged, but um, I think it should. Should be should be merged eventually. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, so for um, there's a few other issues we've had um, in the past, and they're also getting close to um, to getting resolved. And that is um, the missing OpenStack support we have right now. Uh, so uh, we're still waiting for the new Ignition uh, 2.3 release. I think it is um, for spec. 3.1 and that PR uh, to sort of finish that release is open right now and that's going to get merged this week so the next Fedora CoreOS base um, image will will have that um, support and we will sort of uh, re-enable OpenShift uh, OpenStack the support with that as well so that's I think a thing uh, many people have been waiting for so that should be in beta 6 which uh, will I don't know if we want to make another beta release next week or wait two weeks and get uh, get all of that in with beta six. Um, but yeah, very soon as well. Um, I don't expect a lot of changes in 4.4 right now uh, since it has just been out of the door. So we can delay this particular beta to two weeks. The we won't miss much, I guess. Yeah, I agree. Um, and 
should we should we do the next beta release after the beta 5 that's coming out uh today should we base that on top of 4.5 then already um that's a good question um i guess so if we could that would be great but i'm concerned about the stability yeah um yeah i agree we should um maybe wait for the 4.5 freeze which is um uh planned for the end of this month and then um the next beta after that may maybe beta 6 or beta 7 at that point uh would then be uh based on 4.5 with the dual support mco where we sort of uh don't have the the forked mco in there anymore Yeah, I think that might be a a, a better plan because four dot the four dot four right now is is so stable uh, as it is, um, and I say that with quotes around it, but it is pretty darn stable. I, I'd hate for us to take it backwards um, if we introduce something funky with with some instability in four five. Well, four and four builds are not going away. We would still have them as nightly. So it's just a matter of choosing which nightly to promote. Uh, and That's name true. It That's true. We, they, anybody that that was aware and wanted to could stay on the on the four four nightlies. Uh, I mean, honestly, I'm not sure what we're trying to argue. What are we arguing against? Like, are we arguing against doing more integration work into the four four line to get get OKD out, or are we saying we should move the goalpost again to four five? No. So um, I I think. Well, it's rather a road to GA. Should it be uh, like beta 59 and then eventually GA, or we should have less often betas and then GA? Um, just choosing the frequency. I don't have any any particular. Well, I so I think be both. before we do GA, we should have at least one, if not two or three beta releases off of that release branch essentially so um right now the plan is to get all the all the dual support stuff into the new master which will be 4.6 and from there we will do a backport into sort of fcos 4.5 which will be uh release 4.5 plus the dual support things and that will sort of be the last forked branch we will have to maintain on the mco side from there on out, um, any release branches that are branched off 4.6 will be the same for OCP and OKD. But we will go GA probably with the FCOS 4.5 branch, which will include a few bits from 4.6 master, but um, it'll be much more easy to maintain uh, just those just those few uh, dual support bits um, in 4.5 and then well after after 4.6 it'll it'll just be one branch yeah okay so so our ga would be on 4.5 with, with still a little bit of the f cause branch left in it but then our our next alpha release for for looking to the next ga would be off of the now unified uh master e exactly exactly yeah. so why are we making this distinction it's because we we don't have the capacity to backport everything um, no, no, into no. into FCOS. No, 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 that, that, that's not what I mean. I'm sorry, I didn't quite say that right. Why are we like what I'm actually asking? I guess is why do we care about the release tree trains? Why don't we just as soon as it's merged, we switch everything forward and then just be done with it? So it's a it's a stability thing. We may have things uh, breaking other things, other components in master because the other component might not be ready. I mean, it'll build in CI, but there's always you know it's not it's not a released thing, so there's no no stability promise we can give. Okay. That's why we we sort of want to build OKD off of the release branches as well. Okay, um, that's fine. I just I just wanted to understand why we're talking about release branches and stuff because we haven't actually formally made a release of OKD still. 
Um, that that's right. That's why that's why I'm asking because all of this conversation of stable branches and whatnot is confusing to me because we still don't have an OKD4 release. Uh, so from from my perspective, the way I see this is if we can get to having if we can get to having MCO merged, what stops us from just shipping MCO from the future with everything else being a stable tree? That's essentially what the plan is. So we plan to um, release OKD at this point together with OCP 4.5. Okay. And okay. so once OCP 4.5 goes um, GA, we we can be sure that's stable. So on top of that, we will just backport the very few things uh, that are already in master at this point uh, into FCOS 4.5, and that'll be the GA release. So um, yeah, I'm expecting to to release OKD together with OCP 4.5. And what is the timing on that? Yeah, I was going to ask. <laughs> so, I, you get to ask all the other questions. I get the timing one. So okay. I know that the development freeze for 4.5 is at the end of this month, at the end of May, mm -hmm. and it'll be, I don't know, a, a little bit after that. So um, probably in June or July, I would expect. So we're looking at two more months of not having an OKD release. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. Uh, A GA. Right. Well, I mean... I mean well, so here's the other thing. Like, we still don't have something for OKDIO to say, hey, you want to do this now? Go go yeah. do it. We still don't have – I don't care if it's GA or beta or whatever, but we still have OC cluster up because we don't have a CRC that works for OKD. We still list OKD 3.11 in a container, and we still list mini shift. Like, at this point, I don't care whether it's beta or GA. We need to do something. Yeah. And and that's you what I'm more concerned. The, well, you can send the pull got... request update this, and we have a, a link on the downloads page, which says try the OKD4 beta. And that's I do agree with Neil here, though, <laughs> that um, having the OC cluster up and all the old stuff uh, on the front page is not a good look. And also, we that's another thing we don't have the CRC yet. Um, so that's what Vadim mentioned earlier, uh, the PR that allows for um, single host, single node clusters. And that will essentially unblock uh, o uh, CRC builds of OKD as well. Is that, is that PR actually merged or is it open somewhere? Like, I, I don't know which PR we're talking about. Sorry. Uh, that's open. That's on the MCO. Um, and we may, yeah, that'll probably just get merged in the FCOS branch because that's sort of the 4.4 branch. Um, Vadim, if you have a link to that, otherwise I'll, I'll paste it in a minute. Yeah, if you can pop it into the, the, the chat. That doesn't work for me. So I think I'll create a new card on the community. Okay. Yeah. So, so, um, so for me, I'm just going to say, Two months from now having GA, okay, fine, whatever. My more immediate concern is I want a beta that people can use in every mechanism that we support for OCP. Me and too. that, and we already, we have all okay. minus, we don't have the CRC. And I'm honestly, I don't care if don't it's a little janky. Me. We can, I, I would like to, like, what can we do to help make this happen is what I okay. want to ask. Yeah, so Neil, um, Vadim's got a single node cluster deployment that you can run in AWS. Um, I've got a repeatable one you can do either on bare metal or in Libvirt. Okay. Um, I haven't finished writing up the, the instructions on okay. how you do it. But even with the current beta, um, you can get a full, a full single node cluster up and running. There's a couple of things that are a little wonky you have to do during the install process. But but you can get one up and running and and it's barfing a few things until we get the uh, until that PR that Vadim was referring to goes in. But it's it's perfectly functional and you can you can try everything out. Won't okay. run on your you know a, a eight or a twelve gigabit you know gigabyte um, <clears throat> ThinkPad. You, you need a fair amount of RAM, but 
but it's doable. Okay. So Charo, the, um, you guys are you're hitting a lot of nails on the head today um, for me because um, one of my asks was going to be um, help me help everybody else get the OKD.io site looking to some semblance of usability so it's not all 3.11 focused um, and I've put the link to the OKD site here um, and if anyone wants to work with me on on cleaning it up um, I'm, ha I'm thrilled to have you help um, so but I wanted to get Charo to talk a little bit more about the work that he's doing with the single node cluster and working towards getting a CRC up because that for me is the thing that's going to change this page. If we have a code ready container, um, then we can replace this mini shift or, or just shift this mini shift container stuff over to the downloads page and um, emphasize, you know, the CRC on the and the single node cluster stuff here. And that's my game plan. So I, I, I've been, you know, a bit uh, overtaken by Summit, um, but um, also been waiting for something to give people um, to replace the mini shift. Yeah, and I think if I think if we can get um, some clean instructions written up for um, bare metal libvirt AWS, uh, w once you're there, it it's a more repeatable pattern. And, and I actually, I, I when I first started this, um, trying to get it ready, um, what was it, last weekend, two weekends ago? Two um, weekends ago. Yeah. yeah, I actually got the full single node cluster up and running using the um, uh, GitHub uh, code ready slash uh, SNC. Um, I had to hack the, the script up a little bit that, um, that Praveen uses, but, but that's how I got the first one up and running. What failed at that point was actually building the, the CRC bundles. And Judging from the from the errors that I didn't dig into too far, I think that's because I was running on CentOS 7.6, and it was expecting some things that are available on RHEL 8. Uh, I, th I think Praveen was probably doing his builds on on a RHEL 8 machine, or or maybe a upstream Fedora. But the the single node cluster it came up and running. So what I did from there is. Um, realized that what it was doing was was not that far different from how I was building my uh, bare metal UPI clusters uh, sitting on libvert using BBMC. So, so I hacked up um, the tutorial I had put together and used it to build a single node cluster, uh, then realized that I wasn't thinking it all the way through and I, I didn't need a load balancer with the bootstrap. I could actually use DNS uh, temporarily. So, so I've redone it again, just using um, DNS A records to poor man's load, you know, balance between Bootstrap and Master while they're coming up. Once the Master is up and Bootstrap is complete, you just remove those DNS records and destroy the um, Bootstrap node. If you're using Libvirt, once you get it to that point, you can shut it down. Um, Edit your, you know, verse edit your your host and add the RAM to that master that you were using for the bootstrap. So if you're if you're doing this on a little box with 32 gig of RAM, you can easily create a single node cluster that has 24 uh, gig of RAM, and that's actually pretty usable. So. Um... So the next steps, I guess, is my question here. So if you're going to do some documentation of that so that it's a reusable re process for other people. Yes. And, um, and, but the bundling of the CRC, the building of the CRC bundles failed. Um, that's not the same thing as having, and excuse me if I'm wrong, a CRC. It is. No, it's not. What what it what it effectively would do is it would allow somebody to to create for themselves what you actually get with CRC. Because really, what CRC is 
um, and I may be speaking a little out of turn because I've only tinkered on the edges with it, but it, it's basically a pre-built virtual machine that is then bundled up um, so that you can pull it down and um, run the script that configures your local environment. So if your local environment is Hyper-V or Libvirt or uh, um, I forget at the moment the one that's native to the Mac, it, it configures this bundle to run that virtual machine on that. And so you get a locally running instance. For anybody that wants to do some significant work with it, I'm not sure running it on a laptop, even a nicely beefy laptop is even anything something someone's going to want to do. So running it on a little sidecar server is probably a better option. And that was the approach I was taking. But yeah, the problem is that this stuff eventually has to, in some form or fashion, work on people's laptops, which is, I think, one of the things people have, uh, the uh, MCO and all these other things to change for CRC have been working towards, trying to shrink the, the minimum viable open shift so that people can do it on there. Yeah, and that's some surgical work we, we, could, we could really start doing a after the fact. Well, I think one of the, at least personally, what I've observed, one of the one of the challenges that we have is that we have to go back into the uh, OpenShift code itself and undo things that were written into it for a three-node environment, right? And, and I, mm -hmm. I think the, the pull request that we've got open around the etcd quorum is is a good example, right? The the etcd quorum guard because it was built for a data center, it says, if I don't have three, I'm not, I'm not healthy, right? And that was coded into it. So we have to go back and make these things configurable to run in a non uh, data center ready environment. I mean, the flip side of it is you could do clever things like have three of them running in containers inside of there and have them quorum on one node. It's stupid and you shouldn't do it in production. But those are the kinds of things that that I did for making um, uh, OpenShift 3x work in a single machine when I wanted it to pretend to be production-y. Yep, absolutely. That's just that's some of the stuff I, I think we'll have to work through to to get it there mm -hmm. and get the size down. Like uh, Prometheus is another example, right? It, it runs two pods with uh, like seven containers in each pod, uh, and that's probably overkill for a single node. Ah, and yes, be, it's way past be, overkill. There'll be other things like that that, well, if you want to test out monitoring, okay, you know, we're going to have to surgically pare down the size of, of some of these operators uh, and what they what they expect to be there to call themselves healthy. Right. So in my quest to get better stuff or getting people started on this page, the okd.io site. Do we put in, um, try out the beta, the latest OKD4 beta release as a single node cluster and leave the get started over here? Um, is that even the right link? Um, yeah, that's the old OC up, I think. We, we'd, need to, we'd need to put together some docs around building a single node cluster. Yeah. And, and I, I would, I'd love for someone to take what I've put together and polish it up. I'll, I'll make it as solid as, as I can try and get some work done on that this, this next weekend. Yeah. So at the very least, this, this line here should hook to, um, try the beta release page. Yeah. Okay, so that's that's wrong. I'm just trying to get what's wrong here. Because this, this stuff here that I'm pointing to, the OC cluster up and get started is all 311 stuff. Right. And there's nothing here. So this, at this one, oh, yeah, the page is whacked. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> whacked. It's post summit. We can work, we can fix this, but I was hoping that we would fix this with either this single 
node cluster install process or a CRC and then announce the rebooting of this page or something. Um, yeah. so, uh, and I, and I am, am happy to take, um, if you take a look here, I think everybody can see this. If you have, um, if you see broken links, this is where this page lives. And I'm just going to throw that in the chat if you haven't done so already. Well, one of the things I like about the single node cluster versus CRC2 um, is that you can share the single node cluster without um, setting up a, a funky HA proxy routing or something. That's, uh, yeah. I think CRC, you can only get to it from whatever machine you're running it on without. Yeah, because it it hooks into DNS mask on your computer. Right, right. Whereas you can, the... you can use HA proxy to set up CRC nodes remotely and like on remote sheet machines. We've done that on servers in our infrastructure here. Um, yeah. But it oh my god, to... that's horrifying. <laughs> well, it wants it wants to own that CRC dot testing domain name though, so it becomes really confusing trying to set up multiple someone. Right, and what what I'm using, if if you have access to DNS, you can create a records, and then it you give it you give it your own cluster name. And right, that's what I do at home. But yeah, that's not good. You can't do that inside of a large organization. All right. So I I'm trying to parse where we're at right now. So getting the documentation for the single node cluster. Um, somewhere in the repo um, that it can be linked to, um, whether it's on that first page. Here, let me see that here. I just want to, if possible, I just want to revisit something Neil said a few minutes ago about you know, deploying OpenShift to like containerized, uh, to a fully containerized installation or something. Uh, this is something that I'm like really curious about and I've been looking at from the perspective of the cluster API work that we do, um, because there is a way to make cluster API look at a provider that's like a container-based provider. And I'm curious if there's like, there's a lot of work that needs to be done here, but I'm actually curious to see if there's a way that we could make the OpenShift installer use this container-based provider to get us to an endpoint of having like a single machine architecture uh, with containers as the backing for what would normally be nodes um, in a in a kind of a cloud situation. Or I or even thinking about this more simply, like things like the Bootstrap node stuff don't necessarily the Bootstrap processes could be simplified um, in in that manner as well make bootstrap a container yeah i mean it doesn't need much mm -hmm. so some of the plugins for for openshift um theoretically that's possible the issue is that um you cannot create a container from an ignition file it oh you're asking for a challenge <laughs> <laughs> You can totally I mean, create. You can totally create I mean, one. The problem, the 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 issue is, you need to init it, and that would mean like you'd either have to use systemd and spawn, or somehow trick Podman to do enough to make systemd do a boot sequence. But if you do a boot sequence, that's definitely not a container. Oh, no, it is a container. Should... It's not running a kernel. It just does enough to boot up the init and start the uh, start ignition, and then that's it. Um, and then you throw it away at the end. I mean, if it works, I'm super fine with that. But I I'm not, I'm not saying an... anything about whether it works or not right now. I'm just saying that that is a way to do it if we wanted to do something. All right. Any resolution there? I guess so I think the, the single node cluster is a topic that will um, follow us along a little bit more because there's a few uh, different proposals for OpenShift upstream going on right now, uh, how to solve that. And uh, we don't really know how that's going to end up. And of course, we'll have to follow whatever upstream decides eventually. So even if we, whatever we do right now, it may change in the future. 
but I, I think it's yeah I think it's definitely good to to get that working on on the 4.4 uh, code already. Yeah, and if oh, sorry, Got the wrong count here. If we could add it into the getting started section, is that the appropriate place to put it? Um, you know, how to run as a signal node in the getting starting page. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah. Too many. I'm popping around too many places. Um, but yeah, if we could, even if you could just put basically, Charo, what you know so far in there as a section, um, that would be helpful. And that would be something that I could link to from the okd.io page. Um, with some okay. That would be, I mean, everybody I could help correct your grammar and fix things. Oh, there'll be plenty of that. <laughs> Um, I've also created some helper scripts and um, files like for your your DNS and, and things like that. Um, do you want me to just link to where I'm keeping that in my GitHub, or do we want to do a pull request and create a section in uh, OKD for single node cluster? I would like it to be in OKD if we could, um, but I would settle for it in your home directory for now. Um, I'll link to it there first just to get us started, and then yeah. and then uh, if folks help with simplifications or um, fixing issues, then we can pull it over and just make it part of the OKD. That would be a great thing, in my humble opinion. Um, so. Let's see if we can get that going um, in the next couple of weeks. And, and don't worry too much, Charo, about your grammar or things. Um, and then if we can have a list of um, any variations on themes that we have to do to make it work on other, other platforms. Um, I, I live with a former teacher, and she is um, very much onto my grammar. So mm -hmm. she, Wendy will take a look at anything, and she'll fix it. All right. And everybody else will test it. So. Oh, I did actually have one more comment on um, one thing I forgot to mention: building the single node cluster using the the CRC uh, things that Praveen has done. The um, the FCOS instance that it spins up for both the Bootstrap and the master node by default only have eight gig of space allocated for sysroot. Um, which is grossly undersized to to fit everything that goes in a single node cluster. So I actually had to modify the um, Terraform config in the and then build a custom installer. It, I had to modify the, the code for the Terraform in the installer to create a, a 34 or a 32 gigabyte disk, and, and then it successfully ran. Um, Doing it the the way that I'm doing it with the UPI install stuff, I didn't have to do that because I'm building the libvirt and telling it, you know, how big a disk it has. I don't know if anybody here has any insight into how, with the IPI method that uh, CRC is using, it knows how big to make its sysroot. I don't think it's possible, but we could ask the door across people to extend the size of their images. It would still, um, yeah, basically I would rather solve this on the Fedora Cross image side. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll I'll get with you off offline then on where we need where we would need to um, open an issue. It, it was an easy change, but but again, it's hard coding the the size, so I wouldn't want to necessarily plant that in the installer, right? All right. So I, we've beaten that dead horse. Um, I can see that next time we need to ask um, Zavonic Kaiser to come to talk about GPUs on OKD4. Um, we still, 
Azure is still, it sounds like the outlier. We still don't have a Fedora CoreOS image officially up there. Is that correct statement? I think nobody has carried, so far I've heard nobody has carried it forward to make it so that we could get an official image up there. So like this is a thing that as far as I know is a Red Hat side problem. Okay. So. I will, I will look into yeah. it and see if I can figure out. It's not like we aren't making the images. We just can't do anything with them. No, unless we upload them ourselves. No. All right. Um, and the beta is available, but there's still a blocker on OpenStack. I'm just going through the list here. And so that still is still a truth. And um, we haven't done anything around documenting how an OKD4 release is built yet. And that was one of the things um, that we wanted to do. So, but I think getting uh, Char being created a start on that. I, I don't. I haven't done anything with it since he created, but he created some initial things around um, hacking on OKD4. That was Vadim? Uh-huh. Okay. I will follow up and, and see. So I think doing. it's essentially, um, that's maybe two different things. So the main OKD releases and all the CI builds are defined in the OpenShift release repository. This is where all the CI jobs um, in the OpenShift organization live. And that's also where OKD builds come from. And they then get promoted to beta releases at the moment from there. Um, and then we could also have documentation about rebuilding everything um, on your own somehow. But maybe we should um, already link to the release repository um, because you can, you can just, you know, check out the files there and all the jobs um, dig through that it's not it, yeah it, it's not not super uh, easy to see what where what lives where but you can um, you know definitely check it out and dig in there already so the release repository is really where everything lives I think it's um, rather than um, asking people individually to dig in we just as some sort of um, short documentation about what all the pieces and parts are. But personally, I'd rather get this single node stuff done um, in the next coming weeks. Um, yeah, and selfishly, that was my priority too, because I wanted to have one running. So I hadn't looked at the, it's the contributing.md that's in the, um, o, the OKD repo. Yeah. That, that's the document the Dean started working on. Yeah, okay, well, I will find that and see what we're doing. But if we could um, just keep in the loop over the next two weeks and um, make sure we um, get to a, a decent single node install and up, if people can take a look at okd.io and give me feedback on, you know, even if you want to just print a picture of the page and put X's and O's or whatever it is, um, and send it to me. I, I'll try and reshape the, the page as we go along and fix things up. And you can also make pull requests against it too. Is there anything else we should be covering? I know I was going to mention that KubeCon EU went virtual on us. Um, so we're not going to host an OKD working group meeting physically at that place um, at that time. Um, but we may do something in the background. I'll try and figure out what possibilities there are when I meet with the DNCF folks later this week. And maybe they'll make a chat room available there for us to um, blather on about uh, wonderful OKD stuff, but I'm not sure yet. <laughs> Did any of us get OKD related talks or, or CoreOS related talks accepted to KubeCon? Um, for this virtual one that we should be promoting. If you think of it, um, send me a link and I will um, turn that engine on. Otherwise... There are several talks which are related to OKD, but not directly. For instance, Cgroups v2 talk from Giuseppe is what we're planning to have in OKD 
once we rebase to Kubernetes 119. Um, I'll find a few more slightly related to, to OKD as well. Yeah, so maybe an OKD guide to KubeCon. I have a KubeCon EU virtual. And I think I've got a talk scheduled on Friday to talk about the KubeCon virtual stuff with the new stack. So if there's things that we want to promote or something, I can sneak it in that conversation as well and get the word out. Is there anything else that we should be talking about today? We got 10 more minutes left. Um, I'm not going to show anybody my um, COVID haircut um, that I let an 18 year old kid cut, but um, I'm not going to be on video for a few days. Ours <laughs> 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 this weekend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my slippers. So. <laughs> I was like, oh, I could go back to my long-haired 90s days. I already lived the long-haired 90s days, so I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm slowly getting there. Um, actually, bar barber shops reopened um, this week in, in Germany here, but I haven't gotten around to, to going there. We need, your long, we need your long-haired self to show up at least once. <laughs> I went back to the 80s with a haircut. <laughs> <left> <laughs> But, it's yeah. neatly hidden under under a red hat right now. So, <laughs> no, I got a I got a red hat toucan that I've been wearing the past couple of days, um, and it doesn't look bad. It just is very short. Um, so, the next meeting we have, um, Christian, what do you have in the calendar? Uh, so it should be in two weeks. Um, From and now? just uh, the next meeting. Um, should be in two weeks from now. I think we shifted the cadence because of, uh, at least that was my understanding, uh, because of the virtual summit by one week. Um, I, we thought could... we just had a, I thought that was just, that was done as a one-time thing because we've done okay, that uh, before. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm fine with either. Uh, we could do the next meeting next week already then, um, whatever you say. Sure. I, I'd really prefer not screwing up the cadence if we don't have to because because it's it's all it's hard enough getting all this scheduling done right to begin with yeah, yeah. That, that's fine yeah. so let's do it next week um same time okay. and then then two weeks after that again yeah cool um so by next week um just to answer joseph's uh question about the procedure that leads to ga um I've written up an enhancement proposal that I will um, put up on the OKD enhancement in the enhancements repository in OpenShift uh, very shortly, and that will sort of be the document, the living document, uh, where everybody from the engineering and architecture side in OpenShift will chime in to uh, to sort of nail down the the GA definition of OpenShift. Of course, we'll we'll we have our recommendations in there, um, and yeah, so that should be up um, yeah tomorrow. Uh, I just want to get some code ready first, so I can just say you know, it's not a lot of work. It's already done. Uh, just merge this PR and we're there. Um, yeah, but I'll, I will uh, post a link in the to that in the OpenShift Dev channel and all the Slack channels we're usually communicating. Okay. And I'll ask you about it again next week. So if you can throw me the link, we'll add it in here and talk. Anybody oh yeah, definitely. So Charo, if, if any way possible by next Tuesday, you have that write up added into the um, readme.md, um, that would be great. And then we could look at that um, and just focus on getting the single node installation and okd.io. Um, updated over the next week would be my priority list um, from everybody. So if you can make a pull request against the okd.io um, website, if you see anything wrong or have suggestions, just throw it in the issues or, or okd.io and I'll try and adjust and address them. With it it looks like a cold and rainy weekend in Roanoke this weekend. So Yay. Um, 
there's yeah. a good chance that'll happen. Just, All know, right. <laughs> you know, we'll just have to wait a week. I, I thank you all for joining in, and I will see you, and we will see you in one week. week. All right. Good. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Yep, you too. Y'all too. Bye. Bye.